you've gone for one of, I'm hoping, your favourite footballers as well, Greg. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is Gareth Bale, who I think, you know, I'm a Spurs fan. So I'm a, um, you know, obviously you guys, I think rugby and, and darts and good snook, you, you love all sport. I don't really have time for all sport. I used to like playing rugby in my teens, but I was never very good at it. But I love football. Football's my sport. And Spurs are my team and Spurs are dreadful. But for one brief, glorious moment, we had a player called Gareth Bale who was superhuman. And I can see Ellis's face right now. He's sort of melting into a reverie. It's, uh, oh, it makes me very emotional when I think Gareth Bale. Okay. The only yeah. way you could have bettered this is by picking a, click, a clip of the Rebecca Riots. <laughs> the, 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 that's the only way that you could have been more in his wheelhouse at this stage. Oh. But I, think, I, I love Gareth's time at Tottenham. I, yeah, me too. Fuck. I mean, especially that whole period where he was, where you guys were losing when yeah. he was playing for you and Redknapp sort of chats yeah, to Ferguson. Games. Yeah. yeah. And Ferguson tells him to drop him because yeah. he's an absolute liability on the team. Yeah. And he does... I, I, yeah, fantastic. I love him. My favourite moment, I think, in terms of watching football... In my life, I don't get to go to the stadium very often. I'm, I'm always at work. Uh, but I have a glorious moment in my head of watching the Spurs Inter Milan games oh. in a pub in West London outside the <laughs> studios where we recorded face. Horrible Histories. Yeah. And the actors from Horrible Histories, Jim and Matt, are big Spurs fans. And so we were all in the pub together watching as Gareth Bale just physiologically, like, he took the world's best right back, Mike on. Yeah. and destroyed him like mm. yeah, just yeah. ripped him asunder mm. in the simplest way possible like in a yeah. kind of in a way you would in a way a dad would destroy a toddler in a <laughs> sort of 100 meter race he yes. just went he just went around him he didn't yeah. dribble past him he didn't yeah. like cut inside he didn't do a kind of cristiano chop he just kicked the ball and then ran after the ball and then kicked the ball again and then kicked the ball in the goal and he mm. did it over and over and over yeah. and it was just incredible to watch it was like watching it was like watching the Olympics where someone had been entered on a dare. And yes. Like you had a 100 meter sprinter and then some guy called Barry who wandered in from the crowd <laughs> who was having to go, go against him. It was just astonishing physical supremacy. It's really it's interesting because you show this one to kids now and without the context that Mike on is really good. <clears throat> yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, all right. Yeah. It's, yeah, well done, well done. But, and and like, they've seen the rest of what Gareth's done in his career as well. Yeah. Yeah. So That's the goal it. he scored against Iceland for us and the goal he scores against Barcelona for Madrid. So they're like, yeah, yeah he runs past people, I fucking get it. But he, he was so Mike good, on. Mike on. Yeah. Mike on looks like yeah. he's won a competition, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> that. He's yeah. in the Champions yeah. League. <laughs> what a prize. Yeah, Mike on looks like a sort of youth team player called up to sort of deputise at right back. You know, he's yeah. sort of like, you stand there and just don't do anything stupid. Uh, Covid has ripped through the camp. Yeah, and what, <laughs> one of the ultras finally gets to put his money yeah, where yeah, his yeah. mouth is. <laughs> Benito from the front row. Has, yeah, exactly. Uh, been, Did you see that clip of the um, the ultras the, talking to the, the AC Milan players the other day? The, yeah, they look terrible. Well, you just think, too. fuck off. I know, I know, you might be, you know, mm. a fairly high level criminal around here, but you have a go. Go on, yeah, have a fucking go. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's really just a bloke in a Montclair jacket telling me how to do my job. Yeah. <laughs> players, are ter- players are terrified, though. Yeah. Well, they're all it still is, the list. I mean, well, it, it is, is terrifying because. It is scary, well, yeah, isn't it? Sure it is. I mean, the ultras in Italy are. I mean, you know, that's, that's, yeah. that's some hardcore do, stuff. do take it pretty But Bale pretty seriously, versus it? Inter Milan. <laughs> the, the reason that game is exciting to me, I think, is obviously Spurs still lost the, the first game yeah. and then over, overturned it. And Spurs were still getting their asses kicked for most of the game. What's extraordinary is that Gareth. It felt almost like Gareth Bale was like, oh, "I'll do it then." Yes, it was, yeah, there was a yeah, sort yeah. of like sense of like, oh, <laughs> "Go on then, go on then." All right, fine. It's like it was like Mum making the dinner when Dad has tried and failed disastrously, and Mum sort of goes, "All right, I'll make dinner because Dad's an idiot." And like Gareth Bale was like, "Oh, fine, I'll score the hat trick, I suppose, if I have to." It's just. It's He's one of those rare talents. And you get performance. you get him in different sports. Uh, you know, that, I know that's an overused phrase, but like a generational talent, where they could change the game. A, a team sport, they could change it on their own. Yes. yes, and that doesn't happen very often. But he's one of those oh, no. players. And when he when he was on, and he was on for a long time, but when he was really on, it fucking hell, it was yeah. It, he he would he would. It's like it's like Harlan now. When I watch Harlan play, 
mm. when he's having a big game, and I'm obviously, I'm obviously surrounded by world class players in Man City, I get it. But bloody hell, he, he can he just dominates a game on his own, and that's what Bale used to do. They also they were the holders, weren't they, Inter Milan? Mm. Yeah, I mean they were imperial, and and you know we were scared going up against them, and they battered us. And then he just went, all right, I guess I'll. He just never looked. Sort of... Do you know what? And he was he was young when he when he was playing, obviously. Uh, when mm. he started playing, I think of like people like Gary Schofield playing rugby league and um, uh, Jason Robinson playing. You mm-hmm. bring you bring youngsters into a team at sort of seventeen, eighteen years of age, and they're not scared though. Bale was, Bale never looked in awe of anybody when he played. He yeah, never looked like he was, he was he was cowed by a, by a, by a defender or by a particular team. And he's one of those players that was like we t- we talked about that air doc with with the uh, you know the Michael Jordan thing, which we'll oh, yeah. mm-hmm. a movie mm-hmm. club at some point. He's one yeah. of those players. Bale was the same, like you like you said then, Greg. Let me do it then. Give it to me. I'll do this yeah. on my own. Yes. Put the hand up. It's acceptance of responsibility. Utter confidence in yourself as well. I um, I love talking to Spurs fans about Bale, about Gareth Bale, because they get it, and they have the same attitude to. Well, they saw the best in Madrid. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I I think uh, the Madrid. I think he was a far superior player at Madrid technically. Yes, because he was cutting in from the right and he was surrounded by players, and tactically he was, you know, at Spurs he was basically a left back. And then not a good left back, and then a left winger, and yes. then we and then we just started going. You just play wherever, and yeah, we'll yeah, give you yeah. the ball, and you just shoot from forty yards. But yeah. at Real Madrid, I think he was technically far superior, and I think his injuries have devastated his reputation. But when you look at what he actually won there, yeah, oh, you know, I mean, it's, an astonishing career. And his ridiculous. game ratio is still really high, and uh, even if you discount the final Champions League, which sounds like a stupid sentence, but even if <laughs> even if he didn't count that one yeah. in his head, yeah, that's still off the scale for any yeah. footballer from the United Kingdom. Yeah, yeah. phenomenal. And but what was, was scoring? In, in but the goals he scored for. You, sorry, go on, Mike. No, go on, man. Do it. I'll, I'll I was going to say the goals he scored for you guys when he came back. So that period where he went back on loan, yeah. he scored 11 Premier League games in 20 matches. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that was when he was apparently shit and Fantastic. shot. Yeah. And he was and those weren't 20 matches. Those were those, yeah. 14 matches and then of some very minor sub appearances. Like, yeah. Uh, he was not being used properly. He was I'd not look- match fit. You know, he was phenomenal when he it, just like looked actually in shape. It's such a shame that those games, his second period at Tottenham, were behind closed doors. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's really sad that we didn't get to. Because there's also been there was also that wonderful game where we played, I think, against Marine in the FA Cup. Yes, and Gareth Bale came off the bench. Yeah, and there was a look on the Marine sort of left back's face. Of <laughs> like, like, I, I'm marking Gareth Bale. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, God! Oh my God! <laughs> See what he did to my God? It's <laughs> fuck's sake, God! <laughs> It's not just the but goals think, per game. I think it's. I'd love to know, and I, I don't know the stats. I'd love to know mm. how often he scored a winning goal, or a goal to avoid a loss, right? Because mm. it's so like when the pre- yeah, when the yeah. pressure's on, that's when mm. you, yeah. the very best players do it, right? And when it's crucial opposition as well. Yeah, yeah. And also, so often he would score late. So so many yeah. times he would score, and after the 80th minute, the thing I find extraordinary about him is that he, his technical proficiency of hitting a football. It was robotic. Like it, he he never skied it. No, nope. the, the ball never flew high and wide. You know, it never, he never shanked it to the corner flag. He just would meet that ball sweetly in the center, and it would smash into a top corner or a bottom corner, or if the keeper was lucky, you know, get a palm to it. But he never was scuffing stuff or you know, uh, spooning it over. He had this phenomenal left foot. I mean, he still has that left foot. He's 32, probably. He could, he could mm. come out of retirement and play for Wrexham if he wanted to. Um, yeah. But he, he was a he world-class athlete. He you know, like yeah. in, in terms of his fitness and, and, and speed and power, the kind of raw acceleration that would probably put him in contention for you know, a sprinting mm. career. You know, not, not like indoor 60-metre, yeah. Yeah, four, exactly four that. metres was his distance, I think. I was going to yeah, say 200 would probably yeah. be like better. Four, but right. yeah. But um, he was... Then, that, that, the thing I find fascinating, you know, I used to really love sprinting a bit when I was younger. I was never very good, but I just really enjoyed it. And I really enjoy sprinting, just the feeling of it. And, you know, Ellis yeah. and I used to play football together. And, you know, we, we, we both, we, we like good. to run around. We, we like to go up and down the wing and all that. But the thing I find fascinating is that the cardiovascular exertion of sprinting is enormous on the body. So you're yeah. putting about four to five times your body weight into the floor. Yeah. 
so you're hitting the ground with 300 400 kilos worth of imp- impact and then to have the dexterity uh breath in your lungs yeah. mental aptitude um balance core power and game awareness to then look up and move that ball to your left foot and then smash it 30 yards into a top yes. corner having already done a 40 yard sprint yeah. that's what's incredible it, that's what's so so unique about Gareth Bale yeah was that he could run like a gazelle and then he could hit the ball like Harry Kane other, other sports you don't do that so I'm thinking about if you're a if you're a place kicker or a, or a drop kicker in union you're sat yeah. back in the pocket or the ball's off a tee you're not, you're not sprinting first then doing it if yeah. you're playing American football and you're a punter or a quarterback you don't sprint 40 yards then yeah. throw a pinpoint pass then, and then punt the ball right fast so bowling is probably the only one isn't it I would say yes. you sprint, the amount of body, you know, not, the amount you're putting through your body yeah. for, like Jimmy Anderson, yeah. the amount he'll have put his body through, yeah. Yeah. is ginormous, and then getting the accuracy. That's right. Yeah. I suppose that's because of the sheer amount of power coming through your. Obviously, mm. you're, you're bowling through the whole body, aren't well, you? Plant yeah, your plant leg. leg. Yeah, exactly. Uh, guess I guess load. I guess boxing is another one where the athleticism is relentless. Yeah, mm. it's like sprinting and playing chess at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that clip? In the face. Two blokes doing that. <laughs> no. Have you, have you not seen it? No. They're on a game of chess. They're, run, they're, run, they're running against each other, but they're playing chess at the same time with the ball. <laughs> Fuck that. I'll try and dig it out. Amazing. I'll try and dig it out. Who's the historical character that you two were talking about when you were doing uh, your podcast together? Is it, is it Harry Hotspur? Yes, Harry Hotspur, yeah. We're talking about, we did Oh, oh England Lure, uh, and, and then we talked about Harry Hotspur, didn't we, coming in? And, yeah. And uh, and losing his who was he? And he was a a knight. Uh, a knight. Um, he was sort of the I think maybe Earl of Northumberland, but he was up he was part of the Percy family. So powerful English knight up in the north, and he's a Shakespeare character, obviously. Oh, okay. And he's and he's the reason that Tottenham are named Tottenham Hotspur. He's you know so we're the only club in world football named after a Shakespeare character, I think. And um, he is this. I love of, that. If I was a Spurs fan. Yeah, yeah, I think it's glorious, isn't it? Uh, and yeah, and so he famously is killed in battle in the early 1400s. I think it was like 1402 or something like Must that. Must have been some young boys um, in Shakespeare's life. But he um, he was this sort of great, great knight, this fantastically, you know, thrilling, uh, excellent at war kind of guy. And so the idea he was called he was called Hotspur because he was so quick in the saddle. He was so you know, he was so good at charging that he had this sort of. He heated up his spurs. He, you know, he, he made them red. So why the cockle then? Is it because the cock fighting and, and the spurs? So um, the reason it's called uh, so it's Northumberland Park, I think it is in North London, which is where the stadium was built, I think. And so the, the Earl of Northumberland's family would have owned that land, I think. So it's that sort of link between really far north and then North London. So spurs now are named after a Northumbrian, which actually, you know, is not a particularly obvious link but um the percy family are really interesting i like the worst um, links with tottenham cliff jones Terry mm. Medwin, i knew Michael i knew to mention cliff jones I knew simon him. simon davis garth bale obviously i like simon davis he was a good player he was a great he was player. Wicked. I, no, yeah. he was a great player at tottenham he, played, he scored a, he scored a coach <laughs> he scored a goal against croatia for wales that is hilarious mm. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> actually he dribbles past so many players it's quite comic <laughs> But, well, um, you could you could, yeah, go, you could go Spurs. You could go you could go Spurs. It's North London. What? North London. Chaz and Dave. Chaz and Dave. Yeah. yeah. Cockney music. Cockney music demotes that. There we go. You know what I mean? Love it. Six degrees Every, of separation. Linked. We've everything's done it. Linked. Oh, yes. Nailed it. That's, that's <laughs> very Simon cool. Simon Davis to Mozart in <laughs> five <laughs> seconds. Who would have thought that was possible? <laughs> 